everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Hannah, and this is another episode of my New York City Guide series. In this series, I highlight a different New York City neighborhood per episode and let you know all of the best things to do, see, and eat there. And today, we are in my home neighborhood of downtown Brooklyn, and so I know a lot about it. If you ask locals how they feel about downtown Brooklyn, you're likely to hear responses saying that it's a little boring and sterile, it's mostly a business district, there's not a ton of nightlife here. People say that the real perk of living here isn't the neighborhood itself, but the walkability to other great neighborhoods like Fort Greene and Dumbo, and how convenient it is to get to most parts of the city because of its central location and the amount of subway lines that come through here. Speaking as somebody who lives here, there is some validity to this. It's not necessarily as charming of a neighborhood as some of the others close by. Like right now, I have a great microphone, so you might not be able to tell, but there's music playing over there, horns honking over here, not exactly charming. But there are some really great things to do here, so I hope by the end of this video, I can convince you to come check it out and give it a chance. Downtown Brooklyn is located in the northwest part of Brooklyn, and it's bounded by Dumbo and Vinegar Hill to the north, Borum Hill to the south, Brooklyn Heights to the west, and Fort Greene to the east. Downtown Brooklyn is a part of Brooklyn Community District 2, which currently has a population of 147,130 residents, with a median age of 34.9 years old. The median household income is $120,556 per year, which is about 1.5 times more than the New York average of $74,314. According to Zumper.com, the average rent for a one-bedroom apartment in downtown Brooklyn at the time of filming this in late February 2023 is $3,945, and it has not increased or decreased since this time last year. I am both happy to hear this because I pay much less than that, and anxious to hear this because my lease ends soon, and I bet my rent's gonna go up a lot. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, downtown Brooklyn is super convenient to get to. There are a ton of different subway and bus lines that will get you here, and it would be really boring and annoying for you if I read them all out. So I'm gonna put them on the screen here, and you can pause now. So now that you know how to get here, what is there to do once you arrive? I recommend you start with the New York Transit Museum. This is one of the coolest museums in the whole city and it is not talked about enough. It's cheap to visit too, at $10 for adults, $5 for children, seniors, and people with disabilities, and free for members and MTA employees. It's located in a decommissioned subway station at 99 Shermerhorn Street and it's open Thursday to Sunday from 10 to 4. Its super appropriate location makes for a really immersive experience. You start your trip through the museum walking through a tunnel with a ton of information about how the subway was built, featuring images, artifacts, and even some video. After that, you come to the upper area of the station where you'll find an exploration of how the subway has changed throughout the years. They have different turnstiles that have been used that you're allowed to touch and walk through. They have a display of old subway tokens and the machines that were used to accept payment. They even have an old ticket shopper and turnstile on display that are over 100 years old, and for obvious reasons, you're not allowed to touch those. Downstairs on the subway platform, you'll find what, in my opinion, is the best part of the whole museum. They have historic subway cars lined up chronologically on the actual tracks, and it feels like taking a walk through the decades. My favorite thing was seeing the old advertisements that they had in the cars. Some of those definitely would not fly today. Mm -hmm. 
when you head out, there's a gift shop you can stop by and you can snag some New York City transportation themed souvenirs. If you need a little pick-me-up after the museum, you can head two blocks over to White Noise Coffee at 57 Smith Street. White Noise is my favorite coffee shop in the area. It has a really cool open industrial vibe with a ton of plants and a fun neon sign. It's really spacious and has reliable Wi-Fi, so it's a great place to go get some work done on your computer. It's also a great place to meet a friend for a coffee and a pastry since there will usually be some open space to sit since it is so large. It is honestly so good. I got an oat milk latte. It was $6.53, which is a little bit on the pricey side, I think, for this size of a latte, but it's just really, really good quality. The coffee has a really nice flavor. The milk froth is just the perfect consistency. And this might not be a big deal for anybody else, but for me, I hate it when drinks with frothed milk are not hot enough. And that seems to happen a lot, but this latte is really, really hot. So 10 out of 10 latte for sure. Cadman Plaza Park is a small but mighty park right on the border of downtown Brooklyn and Brooklyn Heights. The city of New York acquired this land by condemnation in 1935, and it was named as a park four years later in 1939. Despite its small size, it has a ton to offer. This field right behind me is great for sports. It's great for children. I'm sure you can hear them now. If you come here right after school lets out during the week, it's a Sunday right now, it's so much more crowded than this. Like this is nothing. There are kids everywhere during the week. There are also some stunning walking paths that are great for walking dogs or just walking by yourself if you're like me and sadly do not have a dog yet. This gorgeous memorial is dedicated to Brooklyn residents who fought and died in World War II. It was designed by Charles Keck and at its designation in 1952, it was one of the largest monuments in New York City. It reads, This memorial is dedicated to the heroic men and women of the borough of Brooklyn who fought for liberty in the Second World War, 1941 to 1945, and especially to those who suffered and died. May their sacrifice inspire future generations and lead to universal peace. This part of the park was designated Juneteenth Grove on June 19th, 2020, in solidarity with the Black community in the wake of the murder of George Floyd. The Juneteenth Grove area is especially beautiful in the springtime when the beds in the middle are filled with flowers and greenery. If you've watched this far, you must be enjoying this video, so please give it a like for me. It really helps me to know what videos you guys are enjoying, and subscribe for me if you haven't already. All right, um, yeah, back to, back to that. When you're done at the park, take a walk right across the street and check out Brooklyn Borough Hall. It was designed by architects Calvin Pollard and Gamaliel King in the Greek Revival style and constructed of Tuckahoe marble under the supervision of Superintendent Stephen Haynes. It was completed in 1848 to be used as the City Hall when Brooklyn was its own independent city. In January 1998, the independent city of Brooklyn merged with the city of New York and became the Borough of Brooklyn, at which time the building became Brooklyn Borough Hall. Today it houses the Brooklyn Borough President and is Brooklyn's oldest public building. It has a nice open area around it with some benches and can be a nice place to take a break, have a snack, and just hang out for a bit. Number one place in downtown Brooklyn to go eat is the DeKalb Food Hall.
DeKalb Market Hall is the largest food court in Brooklyn with over 60,000 square feet of space, housing over 30 local and regional vendors who offer every single kind of cuisine you can possibly imagine. It's located in the basement of the City Point building and it's open daily between 11 and 9. This is a great place to come if you have a large group of people with you because everyone can get exactly what they want. My favorite vendors include Pierogi Boys, which we'll talk more about in a minute, Eight Turn Crepe, and Wiki Wiki, but you really can't go wrong with any of it. Every single thing here is delicious. A bonus tip for you, if you are coming to the city, I know a lot of people like to go to Cat's Deli. And if you want the novelty of doing so at the main location in the East Village, that's fine. But if you're just interested in trying the food, this place right behind me in the DeKalb Food Hall, it's the same stuff and there's rarely a line. If you go to the location in the East Village, there's always gonna be a massive line. So if you're not too hung up on going to the original location, just come here. This time, my fiance Ross decided to go to Daigo Sushi and he got the spicy tuna, salmon avocado, and yellowtail scallion rolls. Okay, I think this is the spicy tuna. It's very tasty. Yum. I, of course, had to go to my favorite pierogi boys. So I have probably my favorite thing to get here, not probably, definitely my favorite thing to get here. The potato and cheese pierogies from Pierogi Boys. I get bacon on top as well, that's extra. And they're just, they're so good. If you've been here for a while, you've definitely seen me eat these in vlogs. But this is my first food review of them. Nothing has ever tasted this good in my whole life. They are so good. 10 out of 10. Since you're here anyway, you should head upstairs and check out the rest of the City Point building. They always have pop-up art galleries up here. It looks like right behind me, they're currently changing this one out into something else. They have a ton of shops up here. Right over here, you'll see the McNally Jackson Bookstore, which is featured in another video of mine. So if you're already here to go to the food hall anyway, you might as well come up and check out the rest of this. It may not necessarily be for you if you're visiting, but if you're thinking about living here, this whole building is really, really convenient. There's a Trader Joe's downstairs, a Target upstairs, there's a movie theater here. It's really, really convenient if you live in the area. I also wanted to show you this really cool statue of Ruth Bader Ginsburg that is normally right over here somewhere. But for some reason today, she's not there. They must be cleaning her or something, but come see that when she's here. <laughs> When you're done here, if you're heading back to Manhattan, or even if you're not really, you should just do this sometime, get on the train right behind me at DeKalb Avenue and take the B or Q towards Manhattan, and then look out the window to your right as you're going through the tunnel and you will see something called the mass transiscope. I apologize for this footage here. It is impossible to capture it well on camera. I've tried many times, but I promise you it's really cool in real life. The Mass Transiscope was created by artist Bill Brand in 1980, and it's been restored a couple of times since. It's located on the abandoned Myrtle Avenue station right after you leave the DeKalb Avenue station before crossing the Manhattan Bridge. It's designed to look like the Victorian era zoetrope toy, and it brings me so much joy every time I see it. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Comment down below and let me know what neighborhood you want to see featured next and click right here to watch the rest of my NYC guide series.